Hey. Wow. Hey. <clears throat> Hi. Hello. Good morning. Howdy, howdy, howdy. It is Tuesday, my friends. We're going to be playing Magic the Gathering Arena. Uh, I accidentally hit Mythic over the weekend, and I know I know that's a big violation because I said I would do it on air. But, 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 I figured out this new thing, okay? This new thing. This, and I say accidentally because you know I'm committed to throwing, okay? I say accidentally because you know that this is Game of Throws up here on Day9 TV. We, um, I, I discovered something new literally within this year, which is that most of the time, the way that I function is this computer right here. This, this is streaming area. This is work. This is my workspace. Now, there are games that I play on this, but typically they're games that are like super dialed in engaging type things like Dota, Starcraft, something that really consumes my whole brain. Um, <clears throat> But I recently discovered, I mean, this is crazy. This is crazy that it took me until 2020 over winter break to discover this. I have a laptop. And I can do shit on the laptop in the living room while watching TV. Because here's the thing. This is the workspace. And when I'm done working, I tend to just walk away from my computer. I just go do the dishes almost every day. Um, not recently, but last year. Almost every single day when I was done, I would immediately do the dishes and cook dinner. Every single time. Because I just want to do something away from the workspace. And I like, you know, watching TV, doing something out in the living room that's away from the workspace. Just a good mental switch up. But, I can watch TV, hang out with the fam, hang out with the baby cats on the heating pad with that telly on and a laptop in the lap. So I just played some best of one. Um, using this white weenie deck that is actually so stupidly, stupidly strong. Um, it's just incredible. It's just incredible. Um, so I just swam my way to Mythic in seconds with this puppy. We're going to play some best of one with it, maybe some best of three. I just want to at least showcase this. And what I want to do today is I want to play some of the top meta decks because the Mythic Championship is going to be February 14th to <coughs> 17th. February 14th to 16th, excuse me. I'll be traveling from the 12th to the 17th. Um, so I want to just investigate, get a look at, play around with a lot. Um, I'll talk about my brain sludge in a moment. I want to get a chance to try out a whole lot of the top meta decks with... Um, the championship coming up. Probably not Simic. Probably not Simic due to the fact that everyone plays Simic and I get it. But man, do this. This one is an absolute beating. I also want to try out. This is uh, Andrea. Andrea Mengucci's Orzov Control shirt. <coughs> well, let's just call it Mengu Orzov. <coughs> that I saw in Mengu's stream. I'm going to be giving that a try. There's also some mono red aggro we might investigate, but the big one that I also want to be sure to hit is five color fires. Five color fires. That's just really interesting. Five color fires. <clears throat> now, a little bit about my brain sludge. I did the intelligent maneuver of walking the Sean this morning. I just, I just ran five miles. Just ran five miles, man. So that's wore me out a little bit. Feels nice. <clears throat> I walked the Sean, man. So this white weenie deck just does the usual. Oh, man. Man, I am roasty, toasty, tired, man. This white weenie deck does some of the usual stuff. It goes wide, gets in, and has a couple of really nice tools against various other things. In particular, this mono red deck that people oh love so much. Eidolon of Obstruction is incredibly good as an anti-aggro tool. Is incredibly good as an anti-Teferi, anti-Planeswalker tool. And due to the popularity of something like Jeskai Fires, Five Color Fires, 
It's just an all-around very, very, very nice way to deal with the prevalence of the Teferis. Now, how do I want to do this? I think I'm going to play the second Eidolon. Loyal Pegasus. And not make any attacks quite yet. This white weenie deck makes use of four Elspeth, Sun's Nemesis. Very interesting to have a four drop in here. Um, Ang8811 says, is cardboard back alive yet? It should be. Is it not? Everything's enabled and done properly. I mean, I have my cardboard live for arena running. No overlay here. Cap 10 says, why not attack with the 2 on first strike there? He was tapped out because I need to be sure to defend against a swing back given how aggressive this deck is. What the fuck is going on with this extension? This extension has just like stopped working for me and it's actually working for other people. I'm going to uninstall Cardboard Live. Discovery. Cardboard. Cardboard Live. Install. Configure. Turn on. Update stream. Save successfully. Let's see if this works. Set as overlay one. Done. All right, guys, give it a refresh and tell me if it works. I'm not going to attack here. I'm, I'm really quite concerned about a swing back. <clears throat> Works now? Did it work? It's working? Great. I have no idea. I uninstalled a thing that was working, reinstalled it, and it looks exactly the same, and it functions now. Do I believe in magic? A do 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 woo Laren says, your stream looks so smooth. Do you use a separate streaming PC or a streaming device? Yes. I have an encoding PC, and then I have a gameplay PC. I'm really a little annoyed at myself. I went to the grocery store yesterday. I got the, um... <clears throat> excuse me. That's okay. I, I just forgot to get lunch. I am ashamed to admit... All right, there's some bone crushing. Okay. This is a little bit difficult to go up against. An axe has become a very popular card in mono red because it means all these other creatures now have the ability to become one ones. <clears throat> probably try to tap down before combat. The way that these mono red decks basically work is they get Embercleave. What's my GPU, dude? I have no idea. I'm pretty sure it's the top of the line NVIDIA. I just don't remember the name of any of this stuff. I'm really not a particularly savvy technologist. When H. Bamble invariably swings, we do expect an Embercleave to come down. We're, we're looking dead. We're looking dead. We don't have any of our cards that let us get momentum against Mono Red. <clears throat> as well as really come across as one. I mean, I, I know a lot more about software than I do about hardware. Like, I just don't know what's the right GPU, CPU, whatever. I have very limited knowledge. I mean, we're dead. We are really, really, really dead. I'm 
I'm going to block like this. This is not a particularly good block. I know the runaway steam can is probably going to be able... Or there's probably going to be an ember cleave coming down on something. I opted not to double block the... That guy, for that reason. Yeah, we're like pretty much dead. Unless I draw something miraculous. Alright, I'm just going to concede. <clears throat> Pegasus can't block alone. It, it Blocking alone doesn't mean it has to participate in a double block. It just means that it can't be the only blocker on your side. Yeah, I forgot to get lunch when I went to the grocery store yesterday, so I'm surviving on some yogurt and coffee right now. I did not know that. Yeah, I found that out on accident, actually. It makes sense, but also weird. Um, it's not weird if you think about it for a little bit, because you can't attack alone. We immediately assume that two different attackers are going on. You know, and everything just makes sense. <sighs> man, I'm actually like really tired, man. I... I ran my little butt off. Okay, so we... Seeing these colors would indicate to us that we're more than likely up against Jeskai Fires. So, this is an okay collection of cards against Jeskai Fires. These little guys can peck in for four a turn. This deck does run four Deafening Clarions. Some lists run three Deafening Clarions, so we can just get super shit on if there's a Deafening Clarion. Um, and if there is, I'll just immediately concede. Okay. Oh, that's an interesting one. Part of the reason why this is such a good draw against um, Jeskai Fires, outside of the Clarion, of course, is Giant Killer pretty much hits all their creatures. <clears throat> Am I testing this deck for best of three letter, playing through top meta decks and best of one? Um, I'll likely be doing a little mixture of both. My god, am I relaxed. Wow. I'm almost spacey. Really? Teferi? Okay. Our guide friend is gonna go. We're gonna go ahead and leave up all the mana that we need for the giant killer. I expect it to go land, dude. Because mm -hmm. we didn't see a two-mana play, we didn't see a three-mana play, and then we saw Fires to Fairy, which would indicate that there's also no Sphinx of Foresight. Um, so... Oh, we can't do that with Teferi out. God damn, I don't know. I, like, literally, I have been making that mistake for years. I am not making this at up this as point. I go. Great. Both of these guys are more or less the same creature for all intents and purposes. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be killing this one that doesn't allow my opponent to do any sort of scry action. Nice. Nice. Even though I'm getting my ass kicked with this white weenie deck. I mean, this is this is kind of how white weenie always goes. <laughs> like, with white weenie decks, you pretty much win really trivially, lose really trivially, and what really matters is the win rate. I have not had a healthy morning. I mean, I did run five miles, which is certainly healthy, but I've been really wanting chocolate eclairs lately. Because, dude, let me tell you, this shop by my house, they just started making chocolate eclairs. I, I, don't, I really don't eat sweets very much at all. 
I'm not like a big sweet eater. I mean, I love to talk about donuts and stuff, but like for me, sweets is like a once every other month thing, maybe once a month thing. And I mean that honestly quite literally. I don't really... I'm trying to just make sure I'm not full of shit. Am I full of shit? I'm... No, I mean, I pretty much eat the same foods all the time. And then, like, once a month I'll go to a different restaurant or treat myself to a donut. You know, so I, I'm really not much of a sweet eater. Oh, that's a butthole-ish. But then these eclairs showed up, and let me tell you, they're filled with French cream. Now, I don't know if you know the difference between French cream and American cream, right? Like, and let's just note, French desserts, way, way, way better. Way better than American desserts. Straight up. Just straight up. Oh my god. The thing about American creams is that they tend to be really thick and really heavy. French creams are really light. They're really rich, but they're really light. Oh, fuck, it's so good. <sighs> God, so I, I ate an eclair this morning. I, I'd gone to the shop um, three days in a row looking for an eclair, and they just did not have... I think I don't trade. I think I just do this. Chew this guy up. God, it's so damn good. It's so freaking unreal good, man. Dude, if they play Torbran, we are totally fuck a roly. Alright, so how do we do this? We have to. You know, I, I actually don't know how this works. Here's here, let me let me just take a brief moment to know. If I triple block this, let's just say all conditions are normal, right? This guy will kill two of these with the two first strike damage. And then this last remaining one will deal one damage to the fervent champion. But Torbrand says, if Red Source would control would deal damage to an opponent or permanent it controls, it deals that much damage plus two instead. So I think what happens is it assigns one damage to this, assigns one damage to this, and then deals three to each of those instead. I think that's how it works. I don't think it has four power effectively. I believe it assigns one damage and then assigns one damage and then each of those get added up. All right, I, I, I was correct. I was correct. Fly, my hawk. I don't really know how we win this, but you know, I'm gonna go ahead and send the bird in. Feel pretty good, good about myself. This game is so fucking weird. It's a dream come true. Alright, we lose. And it's okay. Glad to have showcased the white weenie deck, you know. <laughs> Fuck it, let's go to best of three. Let's go to best of three. You know, I, he, here's the thing that um, I reached Mythic with this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely hit me. Like, my win rate was like 85%. It was actually fucking hilarious, man. I was like destroying everyone. And I was like, I'm gonna show this on air on Monday. Or Tuesday, or whenever I stream. And then I like turn the stream on, and I'm just like getting ripped to shreds. And everyone's like, what? I ask stupid questions. Says, hey Sean, how come you don't have channel points? I don't think that's a stupid question. I think that one is completely reasonable. I'm gonna hang on to this one because I love Elspeth. But this is not the best hand. Um... We really do want one drops. By the way, best of one tends to be riddled with mono red, but it's perfectly, perfectly acceptable in best of three. <sighs> How come I don't have two points? 
the reason that I do not use the channel point system is because um, I, I did not find the channel point system to be particularly well implemented. Um, there is there is an idea. I'm gonna go ahead and do this, and then probably see it immediately. There is okay. So l let's let's talk about the difference between the the sort of ethos of the feature and then the actual implementation of the feature. There's this idea of hey, one way for someone to support a channel is to subscribe, right? That's one way. Another way for someone to support a channel is to participate in chat. Another way is just to show up and watch a lot. And some of these have two-way interactions to them. I'm gonna go Eidolon and Loyal Pegasus. Some of these have two-way interaction, or two-way, um, yeah, two-way interactions to them. Like, if you subscribe to this channel, you get emotes and you get a badge. If you participate in chat, people will participate back and sometimes I'll say something. But what about someone who's just watching a lot, right? You don't really get anything for watching a lot. Like, let's let's kind of add a little bit of, of stuff to it. And, of course, everything I'm saying has a looseness to it. Get me the fuck out of this game. Everything I'm saying is not, like, hard objective truth. Because it's like, yeah, sometimes people just want to tune in and watch and they're already satisfied. They don't need anything more. But this idea of channel points, I think, makes pretty great sense. I think it makes pretty great sense. The idea of giving some sort of bigger reward to more dedicated viewers to give them something special. But I think that it is very important to understand that, well, I, I, yeah, I, I, I just understand Twitch as not being a video platform as much as being a community platform. You know, like, I, I watch plenty of shit on Netflix. I watch plenty of stuff on Vimeo. I watch plenty of stuff on YouTube. And the community aspect is smack in your face when you wind up watching Twitch because there's a back and forth interaction as I'm playing, I'm talking to you, and you're, you know, doing stuff in a back and forth. And so, so features that are community focused have tended to be the ones that are very successful on Twitch. And when I look at the channel points thing, I don't quite see ways that create two-way interactions, ways that stimulate community, ways that, um, let me stop speaking abstractly. Like, okay, you have channel points. What do you do with the channel points, okay? What do you do with the channel points? How about someone who is not able to chat because it's sub chat mode suddenly is able to chat okay that seems sort of reasonable but hey that's disrupting the way that a sub only chat would function um hold on let me just go ahead and cut elspeth's son's nemesis as it is too slow add in the devout decrees add in the glass caskets do i want to get a hush bringer i don't think so that's going to disrupt a lot of my stuff i think we have to get rid of this one weak blocker in the loyal pegasus gideon sacrifice all damage would be uh, Delta U be redirected to one. That's actually incredibly good in this matchup because it's an Ember Cleave matchup. So I'm going to put in those three. Loyal Pegasus is always shit versus Mono Red because it can't block. Perfect. So, you know, um, one of the reasons why we have sub only chat is it greatly decreases the amount of just general, like, lull, Keck W, you know, the sort of spam fun. You know, like, if you are going to a sports game, and you're in the crowd, you're always cheering and jeering, and that's part of the fun. There's channels that focus on being kind of like a stadium crowd cheering type thing. That's just not what we want to have here. We want to have a lot more focus on conversation. We want to have a lot more focus. Ow, fuck, man. I am getting a lot of pain right here today. <sighs> I think I'm going to ditch the unbreakable formation. Mm. Yeah, so, I mean, like, if it's sub-only chat here, because of the specific reason of this is the type of interaction that I want, it, it kind of disrupts that, you know? Or the idea of, like, hey, what if there's an emote that you can rent? I've seen that. And that kind of seems... Oh, God, I think I have some sort of, like, shit at the top of my tummy that's annoying me. Some something that's disrupting disrupting the tongue tongue. Uh, that's no fun. Yeah, 
Yeah, the sort of rent and emote is like kind of kind of weird. You know, it, it it seems a little bit like half. It seems like half of an idea. All right, I'm gonna zap this guy. Let's get that one out right now. Raise the alarm. What do I think about raise the alarm? I think no. I think I have a lot of ways to spend mana, so I kind of want to do that. I think this game is going to be a slow and steady sort of game. Um, I, I've seen like you can use channel points to like highlight your message, which suddenly starts to disrupt the idea of certain types of community things. Or like, and it's also just I don't know. It feels we it feels weird, man. I think I'm just gonna play it all out, and then I'm just gonna let some attacks come in. I don't know. It, it's hard for me. Like, hey, here is um, sub mode. It's a way to build a community and for people to have an optional way to support you if they want to support you. Like, for instance, Mr. Jora. Hey, just gifted ten subs, Mr. Jora. You totally don't have to do that. I'm deeply grateful that you're doing that. And the other people that were gifted subs get to come in. They get to participate in the chat. They get to feel like they're part of the community. Oh, this is clever. You play an axe. The other, an axe dies. Boom. All right. Um. I know exactly what I'm going to do this time. So, like, sub mode helps build community, helps build a sense of identity, you know, helps do a lot of these other things. Like, like subscriptions and things around subscriptions make sense. They, ma they make sense. Like, it makes sense. I have a real trouble making sense out of the use case for channel points currently. Again, there, there's this sort of essence to the idea that I actually think makes a lot, lot, lot of sense. All right, so watch this. This is so good. All damage that would be dealt to you and to permanents you control is dealt to the chosen permanent instead. So I'm going to block here. I'm going to block here. I'm going to block. Let's see. How do I want to do this? All right. <sighs> see, see, in so Zen says JP's channel points. The only thing you can spend your channel points on on it me JP's channel is to ban yourself. <laughs> we expect the Ember Cleave will go on the double blocked creature because my opponent is looking to clear the board. So great. So we say resolve. Now, all damage that would be dealt to you or permits you control is dealt instead to Law Rune Enforcer. So this guy's really going to get shit on. See, that's like really funny. That's a funny thing to do. Because I feel like a lot of the other rewards that channel points can currently provide... Feel like they go against the grain of other currently implemented things. What what just happened? Did I misread this? First strike killed the enforcer. And then once it was dead. I didn't I did not know that when it died the effect ended. Huh. I did not know that. I guess I guess what I was doing is I was applying the idea of how combat interactions work where like if I block with a creature and then I sacrifice this creature, that combat damage is technically still assigned to that creature so it fizzles. 
Um, so what I have successfully done is self owned. So we're going to go ahead and concede. <laughs> um, so I was aware that the creature was going to die first. Um, which is why I had it just block a little, little baby boy. Simp HF says, why not make the rewards of channel points so expensive that they're rarely ever redeemed? Because then why the fuck do we have channel points? You know, it's kind of like if I do nothing and I just say, hey guys, welcome to the channel. Let's play some magic. People are like, all right, this is the channel I go to to watch some magic. And then it's like, guys, I want to let you know we have channel points. If you want to highlight your message. All you have to do is watch for 180 hours. You get one highlighted message. And people will literally understand what they've been told, but they don't understand, they won't understand why the fuck. Like, just make it cheaper, Sean. Why, why, why not make it cheaper? You know, all that sort of things. Um, often, not doing anything is actually better than doing something poorly or doing something weirdly. For instance, a television show that has two good seasons and then stops. No, 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 no. Let's try this again. A television show that does three good seasons and stops, like Avatar The Last Airbender, will be eternally recommended as one of the best TV shows of all time. A show like Heroes, that had a great first season, a weird second season, a bad third season, and then just kept going, and just kept going, and then just kept going. You know, actually, Game of Thrones is a really great example. Game of Thrones had a number of kick-ass seasons. And then it shit the bed. Dun, dun. <laughs> now, ideally, you have something like Breaking Bad that's just pretty dang good start to finish. I'm going to go ahead and once again play the Eidolon of Obstruction to shut down this night. We'll, we'll take a look at what Seed Crown is. Seed Crown could be Rakdos Knights, could be Mono Black. It appears that it's Mono Black. Which oven is which? So th that's, that's maybe the real fundamental statement of why um, I, I, we don't have channel points here, is that I can't think of a way to do it well. And therefore, the only thing that I can think of is to do it poorly. And so I'd rather just not do it. And again, I, I do think that I, I'm in full support of Twitch having come up with the idea and that they're implementing it and that they're trying it out a little bit. Um, I would say right now it doesn't seem uh, appropriately implemented. Now, if I do this... I'm going to not block. Yeah, Siege Crown can pump it, but um, I would rather have some sort of giant killer be able to bomb the thing. Great. and then raise the alarm at the end of the turn. <sighs> My hand's pretty face up about that, but, um... You know, like, another feature is the hype train. I think the hype train is weird. I really think that the hype train is has been executed very weirdly because there's this idea of, like, if, you know, sometimes when you're watching this channel, for instance, something ridiculous will happen. This is an extremely good exchange. Something ridiculous will happen. And you will see chat explode. Ah, you know, and if you watch Kit Boga's channel, if you watch um, uh, It Me JP's Drop Frames show, you'll see lots of instances of this type of. meter that goes up as the hype is occurring. Alright, so. a really common thing large companies do is they say, hey. What's a third-party thing that people are doing elsewhere? Like polls. Like hype meters. You know what? Let's just make that part of our chat. Oh, Clips is another one. Twitch Clips emerged because there was a uh, program called Oddshot that people would use to clip things. 
And Twitch went, hey, this is pretty good. Um, let's do this sideboarding briefly. <sighs> Hushbringer. Creatures entering the battlefield or dying don't cause abilities to trigger. Venerated Loxodon is good for doing really huge smashes, but I think having a Hushbringer in to ping in the skies and to deny the cauldrons makes a lot more sense because the way that these mono black decks work is they're really pinger decks. They play a thing, ping you a little bit, maybe they play a few creatures early, ping you a little bit, and then they finish with the Grey Merchant of Asphodel, who shan't be named Gary because he's too much of a shit garbage card that no one should play for me to give it any credit. I also don't think we necessarily need this. We can just go ahead and get this out of the way, have some board clearing effects, and then I'll probably cut a giant killer. We don't need a ton of giant killers in there. Um, we're mostly going over the top, so I think that'll be fine. But something like the Hype Train, yes, there's lots of features that Twitch has made like Hype Train that represent seeing somewhere else a third party. Um, I gotta sh throw this one back. I have one creature. Ah, oh, fuck. Well, I mean, this is at least a way better starting hand. But with Hype Train, this idea of people start to sub and they start to donate, and that's a measurement of hype, right? That specifically the providing of money, not the providing of conversation, not the providing of, you know, any number of other things. Uh... Not the incidents of chatter or the incidents of any sort of community participation outside money giving. But then it's like five minutes to unlock the next level of hype. What? That, I mean, immediately that doesn't make any sense. Like, let me give an example. If I say a joke that you find so funny and everyone's like, ha ha ha, the chat's just spamming with laughter. And then I go, guys... Thanks for the laughter. We have five more minutes to unlock the next level of laughter. What? I mean, it's going in the reverse order, right? It's going in the reverse order. If I keep making jokes, you would see the, the, the chatter and the laughter continue on, but to suddenly slam down, all right. Let's keep the laughter going for five more minutes. Okay, guys, we've unlocked level two of laughter. Let's go to level three of laughter. Come on, dudes. Um, It's sort of trying to imply that there would be a daisy chaining that would occur from a single moment. I mean, if you think about it, like, like th think for a moment conceptually about what Twitch Clips does, right? Twitch Clips is 30 to 30 seconds to like, or I mean, it's like up to 90 seconds, up to two minutes, something like this. I don't think I'm getting this wrong. It's like up to two minutes. Whatever. And the idea is that there's a miniature moment, right? There's a miniature moment that you want to extract. You want to be able to tell a two minute story at most. Often it's a 15 second story a 30 second story, a 60 second story. It doesn't have to be a two minute long little story. But it's of a funny play, a funny moment. A funny etc. I think I just prepared a bonk. I think it is a good day to bonk. One, two, three, yeah. Alright, so, so Twitch Clips is really successful. People share clips like freaking crazy. It vex. Now, let's take a moment to think about... Please attack. Let's take a moment to think about how hype trains work. Hype trains are trying to daisy chain up to 20 to 25 minutes of hype. That's a long fucking time that seems directly discordant with another one of their features. Twitch Clips already implies that you want to extract 30 second to two minute hype moments of video. And then there's a hype train feature that implies that there's up to 25 minutes of hype happening at a time. Do you see what I mean? Does that make sense? It's sort of a conceptual mismatch. 
Um, I think I swing with this. And then once it is my opponent's turn, I tap the thing that provides lifelink. And, and I think that what a lot of people felt when the hype train came out is that there was an intuitive discordance, right? You're, you're, you're sort of looking at that and you're like, wait, what? You're kind of having this, huh? You know, sort of experience. I don't know what else to do. Let's go ahead and just make it work. So we swing. We do this, and then before blocks are declared, we make that asshole unable to block. And, I mean, like, I genuinely think... If you took Hype Train and turned it into an overlay meter that tracked certain phrases like lull, lol, haha, raffle, lameo, keck w, tee hee hee, however the fuck you want to laugh, if it tracked that particular statistic and people could just see that go up and down, I honestly think that that's a substantially more effective um, it's a substantially more effective use of hype than the daisy chain levels. And because uh, one of the other things, in case some of you don't know, because most people disabled hype trains that I know, personally. I don't know what it looks like on Twitch globally. Uh, there's this idea of if you, if people subscribe and donate or do whatever enough, you get to the next level of hype and it unlocks emotes. And if you were there for the hype, it unlocks emotes in that way. You know, it's, it's sort of like a lot of other weird things. I mean, hell, just have a meter that shows influxes of subs and then going back down. Influxes of ha-ha-has and going back down. Like something simple and clean such as this, I feel like would be... Couldn't we have attacked there and tapped before blockers again for lethal? I don't I don't think I see to what you're referring. To what you are referring. Actually, I should just trade this, right? Yeah, I think I think I should just be trading this with the soldier. Huh. Yeah, I, I think that it's sort of over-engineered. You know, it kind of reminds me of, like, the remote control that I have right now that is volume up, volume down, home, change channel, and then a navigation thing, and that's it. It's, like, really simple. And it's really clean. Compared to one of those remotes that has, like, 70 buttons that, like, when I want to just, like, mute, I have to, like, stare at this thing for a really long time, and I'm sort of like, meh. So, I mean, I probably have some way to kill here somehow. I think I tap this guy and something's going through for four somewhere, somehow. Something? Yeah. Looks like we did it. You know, I, I, I will I will think back to I had this fantastic teacher in high school. English teacher by the name of Mr. Wickenhauser. Guy was just fantastic. Just fucking amazing. One of the big reasons why he was amazing is he, he just treated all the students like adults, like equals, in a way. Never, never was condescending once. Just fucking awesome. And just really bright as fuck. Just one of those teachers that gave a shit. I love teachers that give a shit. He was amazing. And I remember there was, um, we had to, like, read a book, and we had a test over it, and there was a question, and I wrote my answer. And I, I wrote, like, two sentences, and I kind of had that feeling of, like, ah, it's not enough. So I wrote two more sentences. And he marked it wrong and crossed out the last two sentences. And so I was looking at that, and I was like, oh, shit, I guess I got it wrong. Fuck. And then in class, he said, okay, for question number six, here's the correct answer. And I just thought, what the fuck? That's what I wrote. And I went to him after class, and I said, hey, you said that this was the answer. And I looked, and I wrote that. Look, my first two sentences say that. And then he goes, yeah, and those were right. And then you made your whole statement wrong by adding in these two complete bullshit sentences. He didn't say complete bullshit. It was my, my words, not his. He's like, yeah, you, you just shouldn't have wrote, written that down, man. <laughs> By the way, Eidolon of Obstruction, first strike. 
So primo good. In other words, doing a little bit is correct, and if it's correct, you just stop. I don't think there needs to be added stuff added to it. I sort of, that's, that's sort of my emotional reaction to a lot of the stuff around um, hype train, hype train stuff. I don't know if this is too greedy. But I know Twitch loves greed. I mean, I think that if the hype train didn't have this, uh, this sort of arbitrary five minutes to unlock the next level. If it didn't have that. If it didn't have... Fantastic. Great news. So good. So fucking awesome. Eidolon of Substruction. This fucking raised the alarm. Now I have a chump. First striker. First striker. This dude. This dude. This dude. I'm going to want to not power this up because I'll likely be using this later to tap stuff. You know, I feel like, again, if it was just like a meter that went up, like if people went absolutely hog wild over something that happened and the hype train just measured the amounts of lulls per five minute period, <laughs> you know, some, some shit like that, or subs per five minute period, and it just marked that on an arbitrary scale. And that's it. That's all it did. I think a lot more people would, would like the feature. It's the ham fisting of five minutes. This is ham fisting, by the way. This Imagine my whole fist is made of ham, and here's the problem, and we're ham fisting it. Oh, God, I love my visual aids. Um, the, the sort of ham fisted five levels to the next hype, and then another five levels to the next hype, and then there's a reward for emotes, and then there's five, and then, and then if there, you were there for when it happened, you get the temporary emotes, but then when it wears off, everyone gets to keep one emote unless they weren't there, and it's just kind of... Oh! Yeah, it, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm beating a dead horse. I'm literally. I mean, imagine this is a horse, and I'm just, I'm just beating the horse. You know what I mean? <laughs> never, never say that I'm mature. Never say that I'm a mature person. Even the gods if you are going to fight, right, that's that's fight a wide looking board, me. so I'm probably just gonna take some time. Commissar says, so day nine, how do donations fit into this? What do you mean? Um, if you're referring to my comments about subs and donations relative to Hype Train, uh, in the current implementation, if more people are subbing and donating, this is how you unlock the next level, unlock the next levels of Hype. I don't know, I just, it seems so odd. <clears throat> my thing is dead and I don't know why. What, how did this die? This guy has fucking reach. No. Oh. All right. Well, fucking what? Fucking whatever. Courage will bloom in all who seek justice. Going Cyrus says, with hype trains and other forms of rewards, do you think that donations have more of a place in Twitch streams? I, I just think that that, I, I, don't, I don't even know what to do with that question. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. I think donations make sense independently, just as a thing. You're going to tap me, you bastard, on your, on your upkeep step. I'll, I'll tap you. I'll put this right here. I mean, donations make sense, subs make sense, some overlapping features between them make sense. I think just particularly some of the elements of the... Um, hype train. Feels very, very weird. Double strike. This has first strike. This has wi vigilance. Stone coil surface. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. 
All right, what to do, what to do. All right, so let's see here. Where are the first strikers? It's here and here. They have one toughness, but I also need to make sure that everything that I'm swinging with has something like three power. So I'm going to obviously do this and this. Oh, whoa. I will do my best to support you. Because I need to make sure everything has two toughness. Now, if I... Yeah, you know, I think this is probably going to be a pretty good attack. If I swing with all of these, this will eat a dude, this will eat a dude, and I'm okay with that, because we have a lot of damage swinging in. And then at the start of my opponent's turn, I can just sort of see what they're doing. I just think this is strictly correct to do. Miyomai, I, I really like this this statement Miyomai says. To me, it feels like that Hype Train is trying to force something that should just happen organically on its own. Yeah, you know what, 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 the way we might describe it is features that support or enhance organic behavior. Like, I want to support this channel. Oh, so there's a feature called subscription that allows you to monetarily support the channel. Done. Great, cool. Like, that makes sense. When, when it's literally going against the grain of something organic. When, when it's trying to create something that is not necessarily done. Specifically, the trying to get to level 2, level 3, level 4 of hype, things like this. Nice. Double block. And we managed to eat something. That's good. Like, applause meters at football games. Yeah, it's a measurement of something that's already happening. Elspeth only has minus abilities. That's correct. And one of the nice things about Elspeth is her exile cost. Exile four other cards from your graveyard. You regularly fill up the graveyard, and you get a, an additional recast of Elspeth. <clears throat> we don't actually have enough creatures in the graveyard to be able to escape, but we're almost there, depending upon how our opponent blocks here. So my opponent did some shit, which is absolutely great for us. Yeah. I'm going to see what Kreshka does here. But I will be tapping this. Tapping this. And then on my turn, I tap the other ones. See, look, the instant I stop talking about something like a product on Twitch, immediately we increase our probability of winning. It's so sick! I got him. Do I have emotes enabled? I gotta disable those things, man. <sighs> okay. What do we think? So we are on not the play. Let's see. Hey, Valero. Valero RVA, good to see you. Hello. This be good to see you. How are you doing? Yeah, give you your pets. Um, what, what, what do we put in? I think it really makes a lot of sense to put in the devout decrees in the glass caskets. I think these are reasonable ads, but I'm not sure what else to cut. Venerated Loxodon is very strong. How good is the Heraldic Banner? You know, there's a lot of first strikers in there. I'm not I'm not actually sure I'm a big fan of the Heraldic Banner. But I am on the draw. Like, these definitely come in, but I'm not sure what to cut. 
You know, the loyal Pegasus is a good offensive thing. It's not very good defensively. That probably makes sense. You know, I'm, I'm going to try to trim a giant killer, and I'm, I'm going to stop right now. And you can see that our construction is a little bit more controlly. I have some removal spells to get to some big hard hitters in Elspeth and the Venerated Loxodon. Gideon's Sacrifice, I actually think maybe I don't want in this matchup because of that first strike damage fuck up of ours. <laughs> we have Tajik, Swift Blade Vindicator, Fervent Champion with several first strikers there, so I probably don't want to hit myself with the whoopsie doopsies there. Boom, 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 boom. We hit Mythic. Yeah, no, we hit Mythic. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. All right, so this is an incredibly intimidating creature. Um, so, I mean, I'm just going to kill it. I'm going to go ahead and save the glass casket because it can also hit white creatures. A very nice draw. Um, uh, oh, my little nose. Yeah, no, so I, again, the way that I thought Gideon's Sacrifice would work is I, I kind of thought it would function like usual combat damage, where let's say I have a 1 1 and the Swift Blade Vindicator, which has double strike. If I block with my 1 1, the first strike damage would hit the 1 1, killing it, and then the remainder of the damage doesn't go through unless there is the trample keyword. So I would expect this Swift Blade Vindicator damage to go through. If there was something else like an Eidolon of Obstruction, I would expect the Eidolon of Obstruction to not, uh, or to kill the 1-1 the, the one, one and not have the damage go through. Or if I attacked with an Eidolon of Obstruction, my opponent blocked with a 1-1 one, one and then sacrificed it. Again, the damage doesn't go through. So this is this is roughly how I was analyzing Gideon's Sacrifice. That if I said, hey, this healer's hawk takes all the damage. Holy motherfuck, I forgot about this lady. Do I just lose immediately? Wow, I gotta tap her down every turn. But it looks like what happens is that the redirection only stays as long as that creature is alive. So if there's multiple phases of damage, then we are totally fucking molied. Okay. All right. It is a good day to die. Still, still kind of a, a wee bit sweaty from our earlier run. <laughs> Can't believe I forgot my freaking chicken, man. All right, Kreshka is currently trying to solve the puzzle. <coughs> you know, you know, sometimes when you pet a burning dog and you're surprised your hand gets burned, you know, you can only blame he who pets, right? Sometimes when you try to open it with your teeth, and then you just get that in your mouth, you know? Like, I don't really have a lot of people to blame except me. Down to eight, feeling not great. Who do we appreciate? Myself! Hi, my name is Day9, and I'm dead. Get him, boys. Ugh. Aurelia, exemplar of justice. I'm a good example of justice. I promise to help children and help coins. Are you a good cat? Are you the best cat? Hi. 
How's it going? Despi does not react. Dude, kill me. Come on, Kreshka. I really don't know how to board against this. This deck's easier to play in best of one, where the, it's just a very proactive beat the shit out of you kind of kind of structure. Crunchy dunchy do. Boo 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 boo. All right, well. Hmm. Should you not be tapping the fervent? I can't. Tap target creature with converted mana cost two or greater. This little bastard's a one mana. This bastard. Elf beth fun fun. All right, we do have elf beth. All right, so if I gain five life. I do it. I do it. Boinky and a boinky. A boinky and a doinky. Believe in yourself as I believe in you. Alright, so I'm gonna go swingo, dingo. My opponent. So I'm gonna have four. Oh! C'est terriblement. Yeah, I died. <laughs> okay. Okay, me? This me? I'm the dead guy. Um I'm gonna cut this and then add these things. Cut a law rune, add a giant killer for Aurelia. So I'm now on the play, so I want things that can allow me to close the game out quicker. Phosphorus says, what's the general strategy for this deck? I mean, it's your it's your archetypical white weenie. <laughs> Go wide. <sighs> Go wide swinging. Was Gideon good to bring in there? Probably not. Generally, Gideon is a subpar creature to have if... My opponent's also building the board. So let's let's think about White Weenie versus a control deck for a moment. If I'm up against a control deck, I'm trying to go wide and get some damage in, but I know that the control deck is going to have removal and sweepers. So I need to be able to get around that. Gideon is a good way to get around it because it hits the face, and then it becomes a planeswalker. So if there's a destroy all creatures, Gideon gets around that. Or if I have something that dies and summons a 1-1. It gets around that. Raise the alarm, where I can cast it instant speed to summon two one ones. Gets around the board sweeper, right? Because they sweep the board, and then I summon one ones at the end of the turn and keep going in. So if we contrast that with against a deck like this, that's a little more mid rangey, a little more aggro. Our opponent is not going to be sweeping our board. So sometimes we're not going to be able to attack them. They're not going to be able to attack us. So what we do is we just keep going wider and we get buffs like Venerated Loxodon to make them all stronger. We get buffs like Unbreakable Formation to break their stalemate, to break through their wall. And so for that reason, um, for that reason, I forgot the original question. <laughs> what the fuck was the original question? I mean, everything I said just was really articulate. It was like, ooh, it was like really super good. <sighs> I don't oh yeah, Gideon. Yeah, so for that reason, I think that Gideon uh, is the kind of card that struggles quite a bit in this situation. It struggles because if there's a stale situation where it doesn't really seem like I can attack, they can actually attack my Gideon and there's not terrifically much I can do about it. I'd rather just sacrifice my own health and have more cards that help me become a wide boy. It's the wide boy life. Doo, doo. It's the wide boy life for us. Ba -da -da -da. Ah, ah, ah. Rich Alice Taken says, weren't we just talking about over-answering? We were, and I didn't over-answer. That's the best part. I just gave a whole bunch of informative knowledge, man. I'm the best. 
Have I watched or am I planning on watching True Sight? Um, I mean, I'm, I might watch it eventually. I'm just someone who is so unbelievably unmoved and unmotivated by doing something on release day. I mean, I just, you know, are you going to wait in line for the next Bland Wars? You know, no, man. One day I'll go, oh, it's on Netflix and I'll turn it on. Right? There's literally so much awesome shit to do in life right now. Life is suddenly becoming good, I think, because I've walked the Sean. I think upon walking the Sean, things have gotten quite a bit better. We're the loyal Pegasuses. This Hushbringer is not particularly impactful against our lineup of cards. This is an essential one because I can giant kill Aurelia, exemplar of being a dick. But we don't have to worry about that for some turns. I think Hushbringer is good against some white weenie decks because there's cards like Hunted Witness that die and summon a 1-1, one, one, Tithe Taker that dies and summon a 1-1, one, one, Venerated Loxodon that enters the battlefield and adds counters to things. And yes, we do have the Venerated Loxodon, but we don't really have very many other enter the battlefield effects, so... So what are you gonna do? You know, what the fucking, what do you, what, you know, what the fucking, what the fucking is the deal? Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and swonk and just be devastated that I don't have the additional mana. Because very obviously what Kreshka can do is swing with this Vigilancy Lady and make this base power and toughness 4-4. Four, four. At which point I would snap it out of the sky and be a cool guy. Incognitus 1. Incognitus. Oh my god. What a thrill to see you, man. Happy 100 months. Oh my god, Justin. What a thrill. So, as much as this might stink Aroni, I think just getting this down is actually an excellent play. I'm going to um, convoke these and leave back the Eidolon of Obstruction. We're not going to get any plus one, plus one counters. This is just a way to get out of four power thing. Big Bird says, oh, and since I have chat powers, I'm glad to hear that you're finding ways to do it as I it is a shame that such powerhouse positivity and joy and love would have to deal with that. Here's to continued recovery. Ah, nice sideboard tech. Sick. We're about to get fucking owned. Terranika makes it indestructible. Does it? Wow, that card's better than I thought. We're, we, we have the look and feel of somebody that died. I'm gonna go ahead and tap out and say, Kreshka, you the better player. Fuck White Weenie. I swear to God it's a good deck. <laughs> I know all we've done is lost with it, but we made good points. <laughs> we made good points. <laughs> we fucking died. 